were ruled by the Nizabs or the Mysore royalty and were thus not directly under British royal. Barhadur Singh Zahar was proclaimed the Emperor of the whole of India. Most contemporary and modern accounts suggest that he was coerced by the sepoys and his couriers to sign the proclamation against his will. In spite of the significant loss of power that the Mongol dynasty had suffered in the preceding centuries, there still carried great prestige to the name across northern India. The civilian nobility and other dignitaries took the oath of allegiance to the emperor. The British would have long ceased to take authority of the Mongol Emperor seriously, were astonished at how ordinary people responded to the Tsar's call for war. The emperor issued coins in his name, one of the oldest ways of asserting imperial status, and his name was added to the accepted acceptance by Muslims that their king. This proclamation, however, turned the Sikhs or Punjab away from the rebellion as they did not want to return to Islamic rule, having fought many wars against the Mongol rulers. The province of Bengal was largely quiet throughout the entire period. Initially, the Indian soldiers were able to significantly push back the company forces and captured several important towns in Haryana, Bihar, central provinces and United Provinces. When the European troops were reinforced and began to counter-attack, the sepoys who mutinied were especially handicapped by their lack of centralised command and control system. Although they produced some natural leaders such as Barak Khan, whom the emperor had later nominated as a commander-in-chief after his son, Muzari Mungo proved ineffective. For the most part, they were forced to look for leadership to rajas and princes. Some of those were proved um, dedicated leaders, but others were self-interested or inept. In the countryside around Moret, a general Jurga uprising posed the largest threat to the British. In Pakistan near Moret, Gurjas declared Kamranji Kadam Singh, Kadam Singh their leader, and expelled company police. Kadam Singh Gurja led a large army of men. Estimates vary from around 2,000 to 10,000. Bogarda Shah and Bunjani also came under control of Gurjars and the leaders of Walid Khan and Maiho Singh, respectively. Contemporary reports suggest that nearly all Marja villages in the area between Mira and Delhi participated in the result, resulting revolt. In some cases, accompanied by mutineering sepoys from Jalanda, it was not until late July that, with the help of the Jets of the area, the British managed to regain control of the area. The Imperial Gazette of India states that although the Indian Rebellion of 1857 the mergers into Rajhas, the Muslim Jumpers proved the most irreconcilable enemies of the British in the Bagan Shishi area. Mufti Nazardin, renowned scholar of Rawani, issued a fatwa against the British forces and called upon the local population to support the forces of Rai Tularam. Many people were killed in the fight at Narawa Nashipur. After the defeat of Ra Tula Ram on the 6th of November 1857, Mufti Nezawaddin was arrested and his brother Mufti Yakanindin and brother-in-law Abdur Rahman alias Nabi Bakshish were arrested in Tura. They were taken to Delhi and hanged. Having lost the fighter, Narishpur, Ra Tula Ram and Prasik Yadav went to obtain arms from Russia, which had just been engaged against the British in the Crimea War. The British were slow to strike back at first. It took time for troops stationed in Britain to make their way to India by sea, although although some regiments moved overland through Persia from the Khmer Crimea War and some regiments already en route to China were 
diverted to India. It took time to organise the European troops already in India into field forces, but eventually two columns left Marek in Simla. They proceeded slowly towards Delhi and fought, killed and hanged numerous Indians along the way. Two months after the first outbreak of rebellion at Muret, the two forces met near Canal. The combined forces, which included two Gurkha units serving in the Bengal army under contract from the Kingdom of Nepal, fought the main army of the rebels at Baladi and Kanchara and drove them back to Delhi. The company established a bait on the Delhi ridge and to the north of the city and the siege of Delhi began. The siege lasted roughly from the 1st of July to the 21st of September. However, the encirclement was hardly complete and for much of the siege the company forces were outnumbered. It often seemed that it was the company forces, not Delhi, that was under siege as the rebels could easily receive resources and reinforcements. For several weeks it seemed that disease, exhaustion and continuous sorties by the rebels from Delhi would force the company forces to withdraw but outbreaks of rebellion in the Punjab were forestalled or suppressed, allowing the Punjab movable column of British Sikh and Pachu soldiers under John Nicholson to reinforce the besiegers on the ridge on the 14th of August. On the 30th of August, the rebels offered terms which were refused. An eagerly awaited heavy siege train joined the besieged force and from the 7th of September, the siege guns battered breaches into the walls and silenced the rebel artillery. An attempt to storm the city through the breaches and the Kashmari Gate was launched on the 14th of September. The attacks gained a foothold within the city but suffered heavy casualties, including John Nicholson. The British commander wished to withdraw but was persuaded to hold on by his junior officers. After a week of street fighting, the British reached the Red Fort. But Her Singh had already fled to Mahan's tomb. The British had retaken the city. The troops of the besieging force proceeded to loot and pillage the city. A large number of the citizens were killed in re- retaliation for the Europeans and Indian civilians that had been killed by the rebel sepoys. During the street fighting, artillery had been set up on the main mosque in the city and the neighbourhoods within rage were bombarded. These included the homes of the Muslim nobility from all over India and contained innumerable cultural, artistic, literary and monetary riches. The British soon arrested Baradur Singh and the next day British officer William Hodson shot his sons Mirza Mungur, Mirza Kazir. Sultan and grandson Mirza Abdul Baker under his own authority at the Kawuni Dawazi, the Bloody Gate, near Delhi Gate. On hearing the news, Safar reacted with shock silence, while his wife Sinet Maha was happy as she believed her son was now in the hair's heir. Soon after the fall of Delhi, the Victoria attackers organised a column which relieved another besieged company forth in Agra, then pressed on to Kampur which has been recently captured. This gave the company forces a continuous, although still tenuous, line of communication from the east to India. This is the end of part one, the brief history podcast, Indian Mutiny. Part two will follow shortly. As always, the success of any new podcast relies on the listeners. Please share tell your friends like us on social networks such as Facebook and Twitter and listen again for part 2 thank you as always this has been narrated and researched written by Andrew Knight music and editing by Harry Edmondson please check out the podcast notes for further information